Hello and welcome to this quick tutorial on how to use the new terrain texturing system which has, and count them, 16 textures for you to play with. You'll notice the toolbar is slightly different, now you've actually only got two buttons. So you press this one which will bring up a new panel. And this panel consists of some basic instructions, i.e. when you press the leftmost button you paint. If you hold down shift and leftmost button it removes what you've painted. Rightmost button will give you sort of a free flight mode so you can zoom around your world to get a better perspective on what it is that you're painting. And on the far right is your texture selection, which is now 16 textures that you can customize to anything you want. So we can select the one in the top corner, you get this one, or the bottom right, and you get this one. And you can customize any of these textures by simply right clicking. So we right click on this rock. It brings up a new folder that's been created. It's a new folder called Terrain Bank Texture Source. And we've provided a lot of textures for you to start with, but you can add your own into this, making sure that it's, say, a PNG format of at least 10,024 by 10,024 pixels. And then you can use that as one of your 16 textures to paint under the terrain. So just for effect, I'm going to pick this one, which is a nice yellow brick. And you'll notice it immediately updates it on the texture plate here, but also reflects it within the scene. And so you can paint your newly selected texture. As you see, most of the land uh, by default is this sort of grass texture, and we can change that as well. So that's the one here. So if you right click this, which is in slot 5, you can change that to anything you want as well. So let's say I pick something like brimstone. So there you go, a very dark, inappropriate texture. But you can see you can change the textures to pretty much anything you want. Now I want to introduce you to something which is called the uh, texture blending feature. With four textures, it was quite easy to know which was the first and which was the last, la last, and you can blend between them. Now you've got 16. So if you pick the very first texture and painted an area, say, this big, and then you painted the last texture in the middle, like so, and I zoom down to here, look what you get. You've got the first texture and the last texture, and then the other 14 textures in a band between them. Now, this technique allows you to have nice gradients between one texture and another. And this tutorial will quickly show you how to control that effect. For example, I don't like that banding. I just want this grey texture and the yellow brick texture. Well, you can do that. You just go into the texture tool again. As you can see you've got your grey here. What if I change this texture, the second slot, and change that to the yellow brick? And then what I can do is again, just as before, paint this whole thing the first texture, and then when I paint the second one, et voila! So now you've actually got the first and the second with the lovely blend between the two, which is exactly what you want for your terrain texturing. So that's how you actually use this. You pick a series of textures that you want to go from one end of the spectrum to the other, and then you can allow your blending between them. And with 16, you've got a lot of choice. Typically, you would have the idea that the first one is the lowest. So for example, you might have brimstone, sort of the, the Earth's core sort of texture to start from. And then you end up right at the end with something, say, like uh, ice which is like the top of a mountain peak, which doesn't make sense at the moment, but if I say did raise terrain and then like so, you'll actually have a mountain peak on which you can place some snow. And uh, if you just paint it just shy of that, uh, say bring it down a notch, and you made this a little bit wider, then you would actually have your snow at the top, and uh, for example if I just increase the height, you could basically create a, um, a slope going up to the mountain and then you could start off in the brimstone areas and then slowly stepping up to this and then a little bit higher then a little bit higher still and so on and so forth until you get to the mountain peak. Obviously this is absolutely terrible but this is only because I've had about two minutes working on it 
uh, and it's completely horrendous. Remember, nature has had millions of years to work on landscape formations and does a far better job of looking realistic. This is about as unrealistic as you can get. But you get the idea of why the, uh, the texture blending is put in such a way. Now, a couple of other changes from the uh, earlier version, the first version of the terrain painting system. The grass has now been decoupled, so you can paint grass on any texture. So it doesn't replace the underlying text terrain texture with the sort of single grass texture. You can basically throw grass over anything you want. I can throw grass on the floor and the mountains and even the very top if I wanted to. Like so. I, I hesitate to run test game on this because it'll probably look pretty, pretty crazy. And then finally, to actually end this whole process, just press E. Which you may know is the shortcut to go into entity mode. And then you can press the grass one or you can press the regular paint one to get back into the mode. And it's pretty simple. It's as simple as that, in fact. Now, if I press E and then go to test game, which I said I wouldn't do, but I'm doing it anyway, I'm going to show you how this custom terrain texture plate, which you've now created, works with everything else. Because remember, you still have all the default texture sets that you had before. It's now you can actually create your own custom textures for your terrain. So we'll have a look at that. So if you remember, we started by painting a lot of brimstone, and here's our absolutely crazy lumpy mountain. But you can see lots and lots of textures for you to play with. But what I want to show you is, if we go into world settings, terrain type, you notice what's set here? Custom. That means we've been we've changed the texture plate, we've customized it, and so it knows that and it marks it as custom. But you can still choose all the other terrain sets. Let's say we wanted to go back to what you would call the old default, which is lush. It's as before. So backwards compatibility is maintained. But let's say um, you say, oh, I don't like that, I want to go back to my custom one. Just set it back, and then you can go back to the custom one, and you can continue editing it and changing it to suit your uh, level. And the good news is, this custom texture that you're creating is per level. So it will save this particular arrangement of 16 textures in the order you want for you painting your terrain just for this level. You can have a completely different arrangement of texture plate for level 2, level 3, level 4, so you've got maximum capability and you not have to resort to using just four fixed textures in a fixed order within the texture sets that were formally provided. So hopefully that gives you an idea of the general principle of the new texture terrain system. There was a question that somebody asked where they said, if I have a white circle, like so, and then I try and paint over it, you end up with a little ghost image like that. Well, that's part of the, um, the blending process, so you can sort of paint by degree. If you really want to get rid of it, just hold on shift, and then left click, and it just gets rid of it for you. So that's, uh, you could call that a little trick, but it's really just about, if you really want to erase stuff, just hold on shift, and it will erase stuff for you. So uh, I'm expecting people to have a lot of time spur to create much more interesting mountains than this. And uh, in fact, I've actually made a start for you. If you go to a new file I've created called default.fpm, this is sort of the, uh, a starting point for the landscapes that you'll ultimately be able to make with not only this terrain system but other features that are going to come later on in the year. And this will be presented to new users when they've got the welcome screen on. As soon as you switch the welcome screen off permanently, this won't load. It will load the flat uh, blank canvas that you're used to. But there were some issues that people weren't getting to this stage. They just saw a big flat green square and thought that was the extent of the terrain system for Game Guru. So we wanted to just change that perception a little bit. So now as you can see, you've got your undulating hills, you've got your water, you've got your vegetation, you've got your slight fog in the distance, and so on and so forth. And what you'll find is that this level will continue to be improved as we, for example, as you can see, all the, all the landscape in the distance is just the green grass. Now we've got 16 textures, we can really go to town on making a lot of fidelity. Uh, so the high points are cold and rocky, mid points lush and verdant, and then the low points sandy and rocky, eventually getting to subaquatic 
and go into all that really cool stuff. So there's a lot of potential now with these 16 textures in the terrain system and I hope this brief introduction showed you how to get the best out of it at this early stage. So until my next video on the terrain texture system, I shall say goodbye.